This tutorial is going to take us through writing a patient report. Here we're starting at the EMS search and rescue report, which we got to from the INFERS incident report. Everything's transferred over from the INFERS report except for what we were dispatched for. So we can just select that from this drop down list. For this instance, we'll say it was a breathing problem. And that, again, is what you're dispatched for, not necessarily what you find on scene. In this case, we're going to say there's just one patient, and there was only a single patient on scene. And we'll just add a patient. You can select multiple patients and have different people write the report for each patient if you want. So here we just start entering the patient information. If the last name matches a patient that's already been entered in Firehouse before, it will come up. If you don't match any of those names, then you can just click New and start a new patient. Tabbing through the fields can move you through them pretty quickly rather than clicking each individual field. I'm checking same as scene address because their residence address was the same as the scene address. Enter their date of birth if you have it. Or you can just click in the age box and type in age if you're just estimating. You can enter a weight and for gender you can just type in either F or M for male or female. You can put in their primary physician if you have that information, it's just optional. Patient disposition is required. Typically it's going to be either treated and transported by EMS, ALS, because all of our ambulances in Clark County have a paramedic on them, or it'll be patient refused care. If it's a death in the field, then you would click on dead at scene. For this we'll just say treated and transported. And moving on to the next tab, we'll have the response code, which we just responded priority to. The scene tab, we want to enter the patient's initial observed condition. We'll say they were conscious and there was no injury. Patient passed medical history and alerts. This is a good field to use because it does transfer into the auto-generate narrative. The easiest way to do this is usually to go add group and then hold down the control key and enter all the categories that fit. I usually do allergies, illness, and medication. And that fills out your sample history pretty well. You can hold down the control key the whole time. You can collapse or open these groups and your selections will stay selected. And you can just scroll down through and select. When you're done, click OK. If you want to add any notes, if you were to select an other, then you could click next to it and type in any notes here. And this will show up in the auto-generate narrative. You can say how long they've been on a medication or just recently removed from a medication. When you're done, you click Save. All these other fields below the patient past medical history are optional. You can enter th items in there if it's applicable to your patient. Otherwise, you don't have to worry about them. In the clinical tab, you've got a few sub tabs. The chief complaint is the main one. And you want to type in whatever the chief complaint was. You can enter a secondary complaint if they had one. You can enter the duration that they've been having this problem. So you can select one hour. 
Under provider, we want to enter what the initial provider level was, either EMT or paramedic. And the highest level, either EMT or paramedic. Typically, it's going to be the same if it's just a single engine response. If there's a two engine response and there was a paramedic on the second engine, then the highest would then be a paramedic. The provider impression is your primary assessment of the patient, what's actually wrong with them. There's a lot of selections, but just try to keep it simple. You can put down a secondary impression if there's something else going on. And then mechanism of injury and the nature of the illness will typically be required if there's some sort of traumatic injury. Assessments and treatments tab is always going to require you to add at least one set of vital signs because pretty much any patient we have, you should at least take a set of vitals. Your name, you usually default as the one that took the vital signs, but if you click on the drop-down box, it'll show you the list of the other people that were on scene that you already entered in your INFERS report. You can tab through these fields again, which makes them go pretty quickly. If you did not put assess anything, put 888. That means not assessed. 999 will give you unknown if you just didn't know what it was for whatever reason. Typically, 888 is going to make more sense, though. Cardiac rhythm interpretation, if you looked at the heart monitor and then the monitored heart rate, in some cases may be different than the pulse rate, but usually it'll be the same. If you didn't put on the heart monitor, you don't need to fill out any of the cardiac rhythm interpretation or monitored heart rate. Glasgow Coma Scale, you can enter just the number. Most people are 4, 5, and 6. And then if you click on the Observations tab, you can put in any of this information or none of it. It can help to give a better idea of the condition of the patient, to give you a level of consciousness, if their airway was patent or not, what posture they were sitting in, this is important to note, for instance, if you're doing orthostatic vital signs and having a patient sit or lay down and then have them stand up and see if there's a difference in their vital signs. You can enter whatever information you want, lung sounds for left and right. Typically, one is going to be normal. So if everything's normal, you can just type in ones and that will hit one and hit enter and it'll just go to the next field and that will give you all the normal values so it goes pretty quick. You can save and close that. Procedures, if you did any procedures we want to enter those. This will all fill in for you on the auto generate narrative. So we can click on the drop down box and select from a whole bunch of different procedures they're listed pretty well in alphabetical order for the most part. And we just want to select whichever procedure it was. Who did the procedure? Again, you can ch click on your drop-down box to select whoever did the procedure. If AMR did it, you can type in 9999, and that's the AMR medic. Check whether it was successful or how many attempts it took them. And then enter any notes, especially with IVs, intubations, uh, procedures of, like that. You need to enter in things that were pertinent to that procedure, such as this IV 18 gauge in the right AC. And then you can click Save and close this. It'll spell check it for you. 
Medications are the next button down. Any medications you gave to the patient need to be entered. You can click on any of the medications that we have in here. Who gave the medication? And then how much did you give in units and then the route? If you don't want something, you can just cancel it out and discard it. Under the status and transport tab, a couple of key fields are the alert criteria. If there was any kind of alert criteria that was met by the patient, you need to mark it down so that it gets flagged and that it gets sent into the MPD's office. If it was none, you just select none. You can always type in N there. It will accomplish the same thing. And then we want to know what the mode of transport was. Usually going to be ground, ALS code 1 or code 3. And then, if possible, if we know where the patient was being transported to. And usually what I do is skip over to other. And the easiest thing to do usually is just to copy from the INFERS report. If you're the same person that wrote the INFERS report, it puts that information in there for you. And then you can just go and finish up with the narrative. Again, just go to the Auto Generate button. It's already got the SOAP as the default and just say generate narrative. This gives you your framework to work off of and start filling in the blanks. So any information that you got from dispatch you can enter in here again or you can say see the infers report if you entered it there. Our chief complaint is already entered for us. Our secondary complaint is entered in for us. You can type in any pertinent negatives that the patient denies, such as chest pain, and then type in any details that the patient, or you can always type in what other people say that is pertinent. Signs and symptoms, any signs and symptoms that were pertinent. And any of these, this is just a framework, so any of these you can just delete um, parts that you don't need. If you don't want to, signs and symptoms, then just highlight it and delete. This is all pretty much done for you. It gives you your basic patient information. You can add to it as you see fit. And then go down to your observations of your head to toe examination. And type in all the information that's pertinent to the patient. You can always put not assessed if you really didn't assess it. We shouldn't be putting down things that we didn't assess and continue on that way. Our primary assessment, what we think wrong with the patient, is already put in for us because we filled out that field. And then all of our procedures, medications, and vital signs should all be entered in here for us. If we put in the hospital destination, it's entered. And then we enter in care was turned over to whichever AMR unit that is transporting the patient. Once we're done, we click OK. It puts it in there for us. And then we can be done with the chart. Right click on save and say save and close. Go through the spell check. Make sure everything is spelled correctly. And then you can save and close everything out. And that's it.